Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comms, and this is the saga of the Prius battery. Uh, this vehicle is Jim from Do Right Fabrications. What's up, guys? And we have been working on this, trying to troubleshoot it. And, it, you know, it had the intermittent triangle of death and a lot of the other stuff that you see in the Prius forums. And the vehicle is 11 years old, so, and this is the original battery. So, it'd be very easy for someone to just say, well, your battery's bad and replace it. Well, in testing the cell voltages, we found that wasn't necessarily the case. And then Jim had got a diagnostic tool, this particular one here and downloaded the Dr. Prius app from the Google Play Store and that thing was fantastic as far as troubleshooting tools for one of these vehicles, these electric vehicles the or the Prius in specifically. And what we did was is I'll let Jim talk a little bit about the battery and all the other fun stuff we've been working with here. So um, we own this car since it was new. It's my wife's car. It's a 2007 Toyota Prius. It has about 161,000 miles. Um, these Priuses are known for going in excess of 350,000 miles because there's a lot less powertrain wear on them. Um, and, but the, the fact of the matter is the car isn't worth a whole lot because, well, we've raised three little boys in the back seat of this car basically and it's trashed. But it's been a good beater car for us, right? So my wife has a minivan now, a new a new minivan, and the, the Prius is paid for, and it's been super reliable. This is the first time we've ever really had to do any major repair to it. And I'm not afraid to tear things apart, and uh, once I got it apart, I started scratching my head, so I called my good buddy Brad, who's the electronic genius, and said, uh, what the hell? And uh, we put our heads together on it. And what Jim found is, with using the Dr. Prius app and this uh, diagnostic interface here, which is Bluetooth, by the way, you just put the Dr. Prius on your phone or a tablet or whatever have you, and it Bluetooths all kinds of interesting information back to you. It showed an error code of a P3030, which in doing research on that, Jim had found a website, uh, Luscious Garage, and it was very detailed in talking about these particular wires here which is part of the battery management system which is controlled of course by this computer right here and these sense wires and actually checking for that so we disassembled the whole pack and cleaned all the uh, bus bars and the other conductors with a uh, variety of things and muriatic acid being one of them that did a really good job and then use a, a uh, anti-corrosive dielectric compound on all the connections and plugged in the battery pack and still the triangle of death so we decided to check the continuity in the sense wires and this battery is safe i've already shocked myself twice with it and there is a i'm gonna try to show you guys with this light here you can see this connector in the base of it right here it's right pointing there. to Orange That's the computer conductor that hooks to the sense wires. And what we found is, in withdrawing it, is that two of the pins were corroded so bad that one of the pins was actually left in the connector itself. So what, we, what I did was, is you can see those two wires right here. that are on top of it that I made out of phone wire. And we just transected that blue wire and that uh, green. green wire there. And tied it into these phone wires and went right onto the computer itself on the back side of it and soldered in the two pieces of phone wire and put it into the harness itself and there's the connection into the harness I'm right trying there, to the white yeah the focus is off here but anyway but at any rate did that uh, pretty simple repair as a diagnostic tool because we didn't want to spend the money on the harness and then there we go spend that money on the harness and then find out that it ended up being a computer or something else so in doing such it worked out perfectly and the battery surprisingly for its age it's five years out of its specified service life is still almost 70 percent capacity which is another one of those diagnostic tools in that particular app so Jim, do you have anything else? Well, so one of the things that, you know, Brett suggested in the beginning was 
uh, and understand how these work. These are actual blades of batteries and it's positive, negative, positive, negative, and the opposite here. And so what it does is a copper jumper, right? And it just basically series the whole pack together to give you about, depending on charge rate, between 220 and 260 volts of DC power to run to the inverter. And what the sense wires do is they take every two cells and they, they monitor the voltage. And so inversely, by switching between the other, the corresponding sense wire, they can tell the actual blade voltage of each cell going in here and then uh, manage how it's charged. Um, and so what we did is these little copper bus bars, they're short, they fit inside this plastic. We snapped them all out, we cleaned them all in muriatic acid, then we shined them with a wire wheel. We also did the same thing to the, the ring connectors on the sense leads, uh, put it back in, same triangle of death. Uh, one thing that Dr. Prius app was really good for is it showed us that between cell two, which is these, I'm sorry, it's these two and these two, cell two and three, we had a low voltage in cell two and a reverse voltage in cell three. Well, unless the battery uh, charged backwards somehow, which nickel, uh, nickel metal batteries can do, and they usually don't recover from that. Um, they, we shouldn't be able to do that. So we pinned out, e or we voltaged out every cell, and we did not. That did wasn't the case. So Lucia's garage, in her in her very well written uh, article, says that if you get that, it's an open sense wire, and it's trying to read backwards across like a couple of cells, and that gives. That's why you get the negative voltage. So then Brett suggests we pull this out. We found that well. People are going to say, well, why in the hell would you even dick with a computer in this thing, right? Well, here's the thing. If it's screwed, it's screwed. You can't unscrew it. You can't make a chick unpregnant, right? So <laughs> this was already broken, okay? So we, I already knew I had to replace this. They're about 150 bucks on eBay. It's drop, drop in, plug and play. The harness is available from Toyota. It's about 120 bucks for the harness, I think. So I already knew at the beginning of this, once we found that it was in for a harness and in for a computer, but Brett's idea was perfect. Let's jump it for, straight from the PC board right into the harness. Although now it's no longer a plug and play, we were able to troubleshoot it and see that this $2,700 battery bank is not bad. The only problem was here. So now I'm in a 200 and, you know, I'll be at 260, 270 bucks when I replace both of them, but you know, the reality of it is the car isn't worth a lot, but I've owned it since it was new. It's had all the oil changes. It's, I've done everything that's it's needed to be done to it. It's beat up cosmetically, but it, I know it's reliable once we have this worked out. So spending, you know, four or 500 bucks for a car that gets 47 miles to the gallon, although you do have to uh, hang your man card uh, at the back door <laughs> as you come out to get in the car. <clears throat> you know, there's a thing about spending money and if I'm running to get groceries in the Prius and I'm not spending a whole crap load of money, I'm good with it. All right. Well, guys, I hope this helps. If you ever encounter one of these uh, Priuses or if you're going to buy a used Prius, uh, getting that app if in that diagnostic connector, it's fantastic. It really is because you can actually evaluate the state of the battery in whatever vehicle you're going to buy <laughs> before you buy it. And again, you know, you can troubleshoot everything through replacement if you've got deep pockets, but I mean, what's the point? And in doing this here, we actually narrowed it down to what specifically is the problem. And it saves a lot more money because, you know, you know, an unscrupulous garage could well say, well, you need a new battery pack and then go ahead and just sell you that whole doggone thing where it's not necessary. So. One thing that's um, important to know about this, Dr. Prius recommends either this one, this was $22 on Amazon. There's another one they recommend, and the reason they say don't use just any Bluetooth OBD sensor is because most of the OBD sensors go and they're, they're a single level. So they go straight, straight to the primary ECM or engine management computer and they look at everything in there. However, this car has like 12 ECMs in it to manage the computer, the inverter, the hybrid drive, all of that. And this one actually allows the Dr. Prius app to go and look at different things and switch back and forth where a lot of the other brands don't. And like I said, this wasn't a bunch of money. It was 22 bucks, money well spent. And it was like, you know, 20 some dollars to buy the app off the Google Play Store, 40 bucks. I fixed it myself. I'll probably run it until this battery pack goes kaput, to be honest with you. Why spend another 300 bucks? I mean, Brett fixed it. All right. Well, 
like I said, I hope this helps. And this is Brett from Survival Comps and Jim from Do Right Fabrication. Take care now. Bye-bye.